I'm going to give you an overview of the standard color correction workflow. And then I'm going to explain the three different workflows that I cover in this course, the Premiere Pro only workflow, the Premiere Pro 2 speed grade workflow, and then the speed grade only workflow. So in general, when you do color correction, the first thing you do is that you adjust the overall tonality, and that's the luma values or brightness and contrast. You want to have a full range of brightness or luma values from absolutely dark to absolutely bright, and then all the gradations in between. Now this doesn't apply to every single clip you work on. You may have a very dark clip or a very bright clip and that's the way you want it to end up. So then you can't really have a full range of gradations. But you do want to shoot for a full range of values from absolutely black to absolutely white. And then you want to adjust contrast. And contrast is sometimes referred to as the steepness of the slope inside a luma curve effect. Where you want to make the highlights just a little bit brighter and the dark areas just a little bit darker. That increases the contrast. And then you adjust the overall brightness to suit your purposes. That's the first thing you do, you adjust tonality. The reason you do it first before you do color is that frequently when you adjust tonality, color suddenly looks right. So you want to take care of this first. But if you do need to adjust the color, then you do that overall for the entire clip. These two steps are referred to as primary color correction. That means you're adjusting the values for the entire clip, not just for areas within the clip. Now one sidebar to all this is that sometimes you want to perform tonality and color matching between multiple clips. And that too is still primary color correction, but you're doing it by comparing the way two clips look and you want to line them up. Sometimes the cameras behave differently or you're operating under different lighting conditions and you want to match them up. So that's performing primary color correction, but you're matching clips. Then you move on to secondary color correction. Secondary color correction works on areas within the frame. Let's say flesh tones or the sky or areas that are too bright or areas that are too dark and you want to adjust them. Or you might want to pick out some object inside the scene and change its color. That's secondary color correction. And finally, you might want to apply overall filmic looks. That is, give your clips kind of a gritty feel or a warm feel or something cold, a way to change the whole appearance of it. And you can do that in multiple ways using what are called looks or lookup tables or effects. So this is the basic color correction workflow. Now I want to talk about the color correction process within Premiere Pro. It's a more technically oriented approach than you'll do inside SpeedGrade. And that may be surprising to you because SpeedGrade is the professional color correction tool. SpeedGrade is more oriented toward professional colorists who look at their work and don't necessarily rely specifically on scopes. And I'll explain the difference as we go through this. Premiere Pro is a full suite of color correction tools, so certainly you can perform primary color correction inside Premiere Pro by adjusting the overall tonality and color. There are many color correction effects. Too many, in fact, are redundant and some actually damage video. So I'm going to tell you which ones to rely on and then point out the rest of them are basically unnecessary. It has very useful scopes, and some people are intimidated by scopes, but I'm going to show you how easy they are to use and how helpful they can be. And it has numerous secondary color correction tools that allow you to correct areas within a clip. And finally, there are many ways to enhance the overall look and feel to give your projects a filmic look if you care to do that. So Premiere Pro gives you all these features, and you may just limit your color correction work to Premiere Pro. But you might want to take your project just a little bit further and work on it in speed grades. So let me show you how that workflow goes. You can use Premiere Pro to do your primary color correction, your overall tonality and color, and then you can move the speed grade to do the secondary color correction work. Working with masks and vignettes inside speed grade is really easy. It's much more fluid than working with them inside Premiere Pro. Also, matching clips is much simpler inside speed grade. There's some great tools to let you do that. And finally, speed grade offers some specialized effects and looks. So this might be a workflow that you want to follow. So I'll show you how to do this inside this course. And finally, I'm going to talk about the speed grade only workflow. You can start in Premiere Pro and then open your projects inside speed grade, or you can directly open them up inside speed grade. There's a downside to opening up projects directly inside speed grade because it works with a limited subset of video file types. So most times you'll probably want to start your project in Premiere Pro and then open it up inside speed grade so you can work with all sorts of video file types. If you choose to work only in speed grade, you need to be aware that it's a much more visually oriented approach than Premiere Pro. It's really geared toward professional colorists who work inside controlled environments where the studio lighting is properly set and the monitors are calibrated. Now you may not operate inside that environment and that doesn't mean that speed grade won't work for you, but just be aware that speed grade is more visually oriented, doesn't have the sort of technical tools that Premiere Pro has. The other thing is that it controls tonality and color together, which is different than the way it works inside Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, you first adjust tonality and then you can adjust color separately without affecting tonality. In speed grade, you can adjust tonality separately, but once you start touching color, it also adjusts tonality. 
So the workflow is different and it can be a little confusing if you work in Premiere Pro and then shift gears and work in speed grade. So I'll show you the differences when we get in the speed grade later in the course. A couple of really helpful things though, if you work in speed grade only, you can do color and tonality matching much more readily than you can inside Premiere Pro. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some really easy to use masks and vignettes and tons of specialized effects and looks. So you might want to limit your work just to speed grade. So in this course, I'm going to go over all three different color correction workflows, Premiere Pro only, Premiere Pro to speed grade, and speed grade only.